everybody. Uh, welcome to our Palm Sunday service. We hope that you, everybody is <laughs> Palm Sunday. My hands are clean. I cleaned them. Yeah, we just washed our hands. Um, we hope that everybody is staying safe and healthy. Uh, we would just want to remind you of a few things that's going on. Uh, we Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. Woo! So we're still doing our video and we're still going to be posting it 10 a.m. Sunday morning. 10 a.m. or 11 a.m.? 10. 10. 10 a.m. I knew I got that right. Uh, but in addition to that, we're going to be having a Good Friday devotional, uh, which will be posted on Friday. And we're also... <laughs> I know. Crazy concept, right? Whoa. Wow. Uh, we're also going to be doing a sunrise service, uh, which will be posted uh, at 6 a.m. Sunday yes. morning. Yes. So Just for y'all who are awake yes. at 6 a.m., yeah, y'all can watch that. Yeah, so if you want to, you know, wake up early when the sun is rising and, you know, worship with us, that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, we also want to remind you to wash your hands. That's super, super important. And to practice social distancing because we don't want to get anybody sick. I mean, we know that we're sitting pretty close but if I have it then she's gonna have it and if, she, if we just we spent we breathe the, the same together. air I yeah. mean yeah so it just happens um so <laughs> those are your announcements for today uh let's just open up in a word of prayer uh heavenly father we thank you for today we thank you for the ability to connect through technology and to still come together to worship you even though we're not physically together lord I pray that uh, the words that are spoken are your words and that somebody will just hear them and take it all in today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And uh, our call to worship today is in Mark, and it is one account of uh, the triumphal entry, and it's Mark 11, 1 through 10. And it says this, As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. So they went, and they found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread their branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And um, seeing as it's Palm Sunday, we are going to uh, continue with that Hosanna Hosanna means praise, and uh, uh, the song is called Praise is Rising Hosanna. Um, you can't sing, you can't have Palm Sunday without singing the song with Hosanna in it. It's it's like anti, it's, it's, it's anti something. I don't know what it is, but it's anti something. <laughs> so uh, just remember the lyrics are in the comments or mm -hmm. uh, underneath this video on Facebook if that's the medium you've chosen to uh, look at this. But um, let's. Uh, Let's sing. I forgot I was doing a capo. <laughs> that was a G chord in case you're wondering. A little With no capo. And this is G code with a capo. <laughs>
the father's love is so deep it's so deep and um when i think about this song it just it just gets me it, it just gets me every time because it you can't you can't measure you can't measure how deep god's love is for us and you can't it's how vast beyond all measure i mean i know i'm just re re quoting the song at you but it's it's true that he his, you can't measure that love for us and um especially in times now when we think you know what's going on where is what's going on right now where's god and all this he's here and he still has deep love for us and he grieves with us and he's with us as we as we go and um palm sunday we celebrate you know jesus triumphal entry um but we all know what's coming and that's what this song this song talks about that as well Have our time of prayer and praise and um ooh, sorry that was a little bit of a struggle right there uh, we're gonna have our time of prayer and praise this morning and um we uh, encourage you every day to please uh enter your uh enter your praise requests your praise requests your praise reports your prayer requests um below or send them to us i mean if you really don't want it to be on the internet that's fine you can send it to us mm -hmm. and then we can say oh yeah somebody asked us for prayer and we won't even mention it. So you don't have, um, you don't have to, um, post it there, but it, it's nice to just know, you know, these are, these are some things that are going on in our lives. And, uh, um, after our, after our prayer, um, then we'll just read some scripture. Um, and, uh, just a, a candid time out here for a second. Are we doing two videos today? Let's do one. We're going to do one video we'll do today. One. We thought about doing two 
And uh, we forgot to ask each other that question beforehand. Yes. So we're doing one video today. If, if it doesn't upload very nicely, then we might go to then, two videos. Then so we might have to split it. Yeah. In our prayer, in our prayer time, we are going to pray for technology to work because yes. last week technology was not my friend. I was up very late trying to get yeah. our videos uploaded. Um, so yes, um, we're going to just have some time of prayer now. <sighs> Father God, thank you so much that um, you are God and that. Uh, you have deep love for us that uh, we can praise you um, no matter where we are, that we don't need to be in this room, that we can be uh, listening to you, uh, listening to this anywhere. Um, we can be praying to you anywhere. And we thank you, God, that um, you are in all and through all. And Father, I just ask um, this morning that you would just um, be with those things that are in our hearts right now. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of there's a lot of unknowns, God, and uh, we don't know what's going to happen, but we do know one thing, and we know that you are constant, you are our friend, and you are our father. And God, we also ask that uh, with this technology going on with everybody, not just church here, but God, with distance learning and with um, remote meetings for, for uh, work and everything, God, we pray that you would just continue to allow the internet to work. And um, we ask God that you let us be able to upload this video so that um, we have no issues with it, Father. Um, God, we just thank you so much that we have this medium to be able to, to uh, share uh, your word and to share love with our people. And uh, God, we thank you that... Um, we thank you that we can do this today. Um, just continue to show us show us who you are, and uh, we ask a special blessing over Caitlin as she brings the word this morning. We ask this in your name. Amen. So um, I'm going to read our scripture today because Caitlin is uh, preaching for us today. I'm pretty excited for this. I know she might be a little bit um, nervous, but I know that she... Uh, has an inspired word from the Lord, and um, I'm looking forward to hearing it myself. Um, so we're going to read Matthew's account here. Um, yes, Matthew 20. This is the 26. This, this is what we're reading, right? Yes. Okay, I just wanted to double check and make <laughs> sure because I don't want to read the wrong thing. So we're reading Matthew 26, 36 through 46. And it says this, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell on his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet, not as I will but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it's not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed a third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. May the Lord bless his word this morning. Um, so I want to ask you a question. Has God ever told you to do something that you didn't necessarily want to do because you knew that it would cause you some kind of pain, but you knew that in the end it was for the greater good. Uh, it makes me, I, I thought of this question and I immediately thought of when I decided to move up here. Uh, God very clearly told me to uh, leave school and to come up here and work at the Sanford core. And I remember being like, really, do I really want to do that? <laughs> um, I, I, I am a very emotional person in the sense that I hate goodbyes, absolutely hate them. So, um, leaving meant that I would have to 
you know, leave those relationships um, and start over and start new. And um, that, that hurt me emotionally, but I knew that in the end, that's what God wanted for me. And I'm so glad that I decided to do that and to go through with it because I definitely see that that was God's plan for me. Um, so I, I just want to propose that question to you and I want you to think of those times when, you know, God has told you to do something that you didn't necessarily want to do. Uh, so in 2018, Palm Sunday and Annunciation Day, which is the day that Christians celebrate when the angel Gabriel visited Mary, who is the mother of Jesus. So those two days fell on the, they fell on the same day. Um, uh, and this is significant, uh, cause it presents some compelling connections that we shouldn't ignore. And, um, uh, it, these connections definitely provide a wonderful backdrop for the question of today's theme, which is what does obedience to God looks like? Um, so Mary is definitely a wonderful example of obedience to God. She said yes to God, even though she was fearful and doubtful. She could have said no, and to be honest, we probably wouldn't blame her she would have had to go through a lot of pain and anguish but her obedience regardless of that pain that she would experience and endure would change her life forever and then later on change the world because she brought jesus into this world so later on 33 years later jesus is in this garden and he is faced with similar questions uh the similar questions that his mother had faced he could choose between comfort and obedience, self-preservation or self-sacrifice by doing his will or doing God's will. Matthew 26, verse 39, uh, Jesus prays these words. He says, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Not yet, yet not what I will, but as you will. So uh, just to break this, this portion up, the literal Greek translation of the word Abba, which is father, means daddy. So he is talking to God in the most intimate way possible. And this here, Jesus is showing that he's a vulnerable human being. He is showing his true self uh, exposed. He's being vulnerable and he is being, he's being honest with God. Uh, the last part of the prayer is also very clear. He says, not my will, but yours be done. Not what I want, but what you want. It's clear that regardless of what physical stress Jesus was about to experience, he was still going to go through with what God wanted for him. He was still going to do it. Um, and the middle part of the prayer, the middle section, is what I found most compelling. Verse 39 says, let this cup pass from me. So I want to ask, what do these words truly mean? And what is this cup that Jesus is talking about? And what does this have to do with obedience? So people commonly understand this verse that the cup represents pain and anguish. And this is a common theme throughout the Bible. Paul talks about it in his letters. And we usually interpret this as, Jesus wrestling with deep within his spirit whether or not he really wanted to go through with what he was about to experience. So when Jesus said, let this cup pass from me, was he really saying, Dad, I don't really want to do this part of the mission, part of the story. Is there any way that we can fulfill this story, your purpose, your mission, without the cross, without doing this part? So what if um, there was a different way to understand what this cup that Jesus was talking about means? What if there was another way to understand this prayer in the garden? So there's a Catholic theologian, Scott Hun, and he wrote a book titled The Fourth Cup. And the, the conclusion of the book unleashes this new understanding of what the cup really means and what Jesus was praying for. 
So before we get into that, I want to kind of lay down the groundwork of uh, Matthew was writing this gospel for the Jews or the Jews who were Christians or had been converted to Christian. And um, because of this, the Jews would have been familiar with the imagery, the symbolism, uh, the celebrations of, of Jewish uh, tradition. So keeping that in mind, they would know what Jesus was doing shortly before he was in the garden. They would knew that Jesus was practicing the Passover with his disciples, which is something that every Jew would be doing at that time. And it's something that they continued to practice. So the Passover was a meal that was uh, held of great significance. It was a meal of remembrance that had very specific instructions for people to follow. Uh, and these instructions were very clear and they were practiced the same way for centuries. So people were very familiar with what these instructions and customs were. They involved prayers, retelling stories, eating, and cups. So the meal is divided into four parts. And the first part is the opening or the welcome of the meal. A dish of herbs is served and there's a cup. It's the cup of blessing. And the host at the beginning of the meal says a blessing over the first cup as a way of setting the tone of blessing of the entire meal. So that's the first part of the Passover meal. The second section is the retelling of the Passover story. This is a reminder that God had freed the Israelites from slavery and led them into freedom from the wilderness and into the promised land. And as the story is recounted, the second cup is blessed and then they drink it. And this cup is the cup of remembrance, which is um, pretty self-explanatory and it makes sense. Uh, the third part of the meal is where the actual meal is eaten. And this is where Jesus goes off script. <laughs> uh, there's a lamb and there's bread and there's another cup obviously. Uh, so Jesus takes the bread and he says to his disciples, this bread is me. Wherever you break this bread, you will remember what I have done for you. He then takes a cup and says, this cup is my blood poured out for you and for the forgiveness of sins. Now, this is something that the disciples had never heard of before. As I mentioned, they were very familiar with the customs and the instructions that had to be followed for the Passover meal. So they would have been surprised and shocked and being like, what is going on? This is weird, what's happening? And then the fourth part of the meal uh, includes singing of a hymn. The words are taken from Psalms 114 to 118. If you have not read that portion of scripture, I encourage you to read it. Uh, this is a recounting of all of God's saving acts to the people of God throughout history. So after singing the hymn, the cup of completion is blessed and then drank. But Jesus and the disciples did sing the hymn. However, they did not bless the, the final cup, which is the cup of completion. Because in his mind, it was not yet finished. The story of salvation was not completed. And this would be, uh, think of it as you're sitting in a movie and you walk out five minutes left. Or if you're an athlete and you're into sports, if there's a game playing and it's really, really good and then it just stops with two minutes left in the game. It would feel incomplete and unfinished. And I imagine that this is what the disciples felt like. This is a, I'm a traditionalist, so I love tradition. So if, if, um, if we're sitting at Christmas morning and all of the presents have been opened except for two, and they're like, yeah, we're not going to open that, that would drive me crazy. So I can't even imagine what the disciples were feeling. Um, uh, yeah, so Jesus didn't have this feeling of being incomplete. Uh, because he knew that the faithful work of God was yet not finished and that it was about to be. 
So this brings us back to Jesus praying in the garden. Perhaps a more accurate translation of this prayer based on what we've learned is that uh, Jesus is saying, Dad, if there's no other way to complete your will than for me to become the fourth and final cup of this story, then I'm ready. Jesus perhaps wasn't looking for a way out. Maybe this is Jesus understanding that there is a mission to complete and that there is a fourth cup that needs someone to drink it. And that cup had to be him. Jesus says in verse 29 that he would not drink of the fruit of the vine until the mission was complete. And later on the cross, Jesus says the words, I thirst and I'm thirsty. Jesus was offered sour wine and vinegar to drink, but he refused. So why did he refuse to drink the wine? I like to think it's because it wasn't the fourth cup that needed to be drank. It, it was his body that needed to be poured out. And that's why Jesus' last words were, it is finished. Like we sang in the song, How Deep His Father's Love uh, it says it is finished and that when we were singing that just kind of made that connection jesus said it was finished and that was his last words so uh this also connects back to mary and her model of obedience and i would like to think that jesus wasn't just thinking about his father when he was praying in the garden but that he was also thinking of his mother mary as well and Mary chose to become a cup herself. She chose to become a vessel through which God's grace and love would be poured out through her for the benefit of all humanity. Mary, uh, Mary sang a hymn in Luke. It's found in Luke 1 uh, verses 46 through 55. And this is Mary offering herself in obedience to God's will. Mary played an important role in teaching Jesus what obedience looks like, and she continues to teach us what true obedience looks like to God. So Holy Week serves as a reminder of the great lengths that Jesus went to to become that fourth cup of completion for our salvation. And the story of salvation is given to us by Jesus, who was obedient even to the point of death. So I want to encourage you this week to prepare your heart for, uh, for Holy Week. Um, and, and some ways that you can do that is by reading the scripture verses that were mentioned. Uh, so Psalms 114 to 118 and then Luke 1 uh, verses 46 through 55. And I can post those as well um, just to prepare your heart for Easter and um and obedience and really learn what true obedience looks like. Um, so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just, I thank you for the model that Mary set of obedience and that Jesus was able to, to look at his mother and to see that she was obedient and that he was able to take that and to to understand, to really understand what it is. And Lord, I just thank you for the, the, the completion of the salvation story. And I thank you for, for your blood that was poured out in the fourth cup. And I pray that you will just um, really really speak to us this morning and I pray that that will just sink in this week and that that will not your words are not going to stop right now and that you will keep speaking to us and that this will be pressing in our hearts throughout the week Lord in your name we pray amen um oh sorry <laughs> so our benediction is um from the songbook uh, it is song 173, and I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but I'm going to read it. Yeah. Um, so it says, I think of all his sorrow, the garden and the morrow, 
when cruel death did follow, twas all for me, twas all for me. Hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that just, yeah, that just kind of hit me a little bit. Hmm. Um, that Jesus died for us and that it was for humanity. So, um, yeah, so let us know how you guys are doing. Feel free to reach out, continue to um, watch our videos. We're posting lots of good stuff, so check us out on YouTube. And um, yeah, don't uh, be afraid to reach out to us. Have a good week, everybody. Yep.